Ecula Sakai is asking, elephant in the room. Uh, the current invasion of Ukraine by Russia. Analysis. Armin, I'll let you go first because um, I don't have as much to say. Yes, you do. We talked about this. You always have a lot. <laughs> okay. I was, okay. I, I qualified my statement. I was going to say I have nothing to say, but you specifically told me not to say that. <laughs> so I said not as Okay, well, guys, Susanna has so many good takes when we're just talking privately, but like she doesn't think like she's qualified. But like I can tell like she's way more qualified than so many people. But when I see her like analyze things privately with me, I like, Okay, so I just we just need to give her more confidence. Okay, but yeah, okay. So first of all, this is I know this is about Ukraine, Ukraine and Russia, but I just want people to think. I don't want to dismiss how important Ukraine is. Okay, but I want people to think about this much bigger. The implications of this worldwide. Okay, this is a lot more significant. This than just was happening between Russia and Ukraine. Well, we have we have had a world order unlike anything the history of mankind has ever seen before since World War II. And I know a lot of you a lot of idiots out there don't understand that because of this world order, because of this international agreement that we have had since then. Me, you and everybody else has enjoyed a relative time of peace and stability that has never been on record in the history of civilization. And I know a lot of you morons don't believe that because you turn on the news and you see wars and killing and crime and corruption. And you just like every other generation that came before you think that you're living at the worst of times even though you're living at the best of times. And even though most generations in history have lived in the best of times, not all of them, it, this is especially true with our generation. The past 100 years has been exceptionally, exceptionally better than anything that, come, that came before it. And this is mostly, mostly because world powers got together and because of the horrors of World War II decided that we're not gonna do that again, okay? Okay, this is why the terms colonialism has been now replaced with neo-colonialism neo because those things messing with borders, even wars happen between smaller countries, okay? Nuclear powers, they just don't walk in and challenge the borders of another UN-recognized country. That just doesn't happen anymore. It shouldn't be happening anymore, okay? The whole world, especially the Western world, the civilized world, and Everyone else actually needs to be united against Putin. Again, I I'm trying to be careful because I'm actually very careful when it comes to Iran. I don't say Iran. I say the Islamic Republic of Iran. But we need to do this now with Russia as well because people keep saying, and I do that as well, like Russia is doing this, Russia is doing that. This is not Russia, okay? This is Putin. The, I, and I'm so, so grateful for all the Russians that just came out recently. I don't know if you guys saw St. Petersburg and Moscow and many other places, they're filled with Russians. Thousands of Russians are now in the streets asking for the war to stop, saying no to war, okay? We have to highlight these people because this is not the world against Russians. This is the world against Putin, okay? This is one man taking Russia. This is not just, you know, it's not just Ukraine that is a victim here. Russia is going to be a major victim here, especially if this war continues, okay? Putin is sacrificing not just Ukraine for his ambitions, he's also sacrificing Russia, okay? This is going to be Russia's Vietnam if it keeps moving in the direction that it is, okay? Russia's economy is going to suffer. Russian people are going to suffer. Russia deserves so much better than Putin, so much better than Putin, okay? And the West, the West needs to be goddamn united. I, get, I keep saying the West. I can't, I should stop saying the, the West given that how many, like, I don't know if you guys saw the speeches by African countries, especially Kenya against Putin. They were beautiful. Okay. So this is not just the West. This is the world needs to be united. But the reason why we're saying the West needs to be united because they have the most of the power and they could do the most. And it was so embarrassing from to see Germany up until now 
being playing footsie with whether or not they're going to cut uh, the get North Stream pipeline with Russia or not. Like, I'm glad they finally gave in and they're like, okay, we're like putting a stop to that. Okay. But they should have done that way earlier. Okay. Like, let me just go through the list. The biggest mistake by Merkel was saying no to nuclear power after what happened in Japan. That was a major mistake, major mistake made Germany and Europe a lot more reliant on Russia. Okay. Um, major mistake by france keep on insisting of uh, making a european army rather than focusing on strengthening nato you guys have nothing with that the support of united states you need to get closer to united states against china against not china against the ccp against putin and against the islamic republic of iran okay the the world needs to be united against forces that are a source of conflict a source of um you know, challenging the world order. Okay. Like, and if this is, the, this is a norm setting that will affect everybody. You, if you think like, well, I don't live there. It has nothing to do with me. It has everything to do with you. You're just too stupid to realize it. You have no idea how much your life is right now better because of the level of uh, trade and stability that all of this world order has. Like, I don't know if you people realize that it was the taking of Crimea that set the new norm that other countries like felt emboldened that they could just do, go around and do stuff like this. And there's not going to be that much of a challenge from the, from Western powers, right? This cannot be the new norm. If, if the European countries and if North America are not united on this, okay, that means that you're allowing this to become the new norm, the new norm that we had um, completely gotten like what well, to, 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 to a major extent have ma made it so that it's not possible in, anymore in the 21st century. Okay. Now we're entering a phase where a country with nuclear power is now feels like guys this is like no other country has been able to do so much to damage this world order okay china would never do something like this with tai you know with taiwan like i mean i hope not because china has a lot more to lose okay this is so th there's three major countries that are a challenge to this whole world order that is making providing peace okay the islamic republic of iran has a lot more to lose so there are a lot bigger aggressors but they have a lot less power and they're not a nuclear power. Well, not yet. Um, and also the, the instability that they create is mostly in the Middle East, a place where the world doesn't seem to care about much as much as this instability causing in Europe, right? Because Europe is considered to be a much more peaceful place compared to the Middle East. So if you can bring this instability to Europe, that will be a much greater challenge to what is the new norm to enter the world than what, what the Islamic Republic of Iran can do. So, that leaves out Iran as a major until Iran becomes a nuclear power. We'll see what happens then. Um, and China also. China a lot of is to to a major extent against the forces of good here because they are they are normalizing illiberalism. They're funding illiberalism. They're bringing. Uh, they're a major source of tyrants and realizing that they have alternatives to the world financial system that doesn't mean that they have to clean up their human rights record uh, back at home and coups are becoming a, a, a lot more normal because um, funding coups is not as taboo as anymore because China is an alternative in Africa, for example, to provide uh, financing for people that, again, do things that, you know, mm, other Western powers would not tolerate when it comes to trade and financing. So China is a major uh, source of challenging the world order, that, uh, but, but at the same time, Military-wise, China would not be as aggressive as Russia because China is very much invested in all of the, in all of this in Europe, for example, right? Um, I think, yeah, like China's uh, involvement in Europe and the and United States and you know the debt market and the labor market and in the industrial you know market, everything is so much that if the you, you cannot challenge that because it feeds upon that, right? Russia is like, again, Russia, Putin is like a cornered dog that can't do nothing but bite, okay? So relative to China, uh, relative to CCP and the Islamic Republic of Iran, Putin is the most dangerous one right now, okay? It, it is a country with nuclear power and it has a lot more to lose. That's why it's acting the way it is. And it's less integrated into the world's economy than China is. 
uh, and it has a lot more power than the Islamic Republic of Iran is. So this threat needs to be eliminated, okay? Putin needs to be put in its place. It needs, he needs to be humiliated, okay? Whether the war stops, it needs to be, you know, Putin needs to be turned into a pariah for forever, like, and if the war continues, Ukraine needs to become Putin's Vietnam. It needs to be something, unfortunately, the Russian people will be paying the price, but again, it's it's harsh to say, but it's the price that we have to pay. Like it needs to, Russia's economy needs to crumble because of this. It has to be, we have to set the norm for people to see that this is the price you pay for messing with peace, messing with stability. You know, Russia's economy needs to be made an example of. Everyone has to see that when, okay, maybe, I don't know, France and United States sometimes fight with each other or submarines in Australia and, you know, Germany and United States disagree with each other, North Stream Pipeline. But the signal that needs to be sent to the world is that when you get to this level of instability, the disagreements go away, the world comes together, and they stand united against bullies like Putin. If we could show that, then there's hope for us to make what Putin is doing not the new normal. For every other country to take note that this is what happens to you if, if you cause instability in the world, if you bring war. So this has to be, this situation has to be taken advantage of to make an example out of Putin by by crushing Russia's economy. And again, this is very unfair to the Russian people, but it has to be done for the sake of peace around the world. Anyways. I think all very well put. Um, Hindu historian was saying, hi, I'm here for the Russia-Ukraine discourse, good discussion, of course. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think my only analysis isn't, necessarily to do with this issue in particular this is more um personal reflection uh for myself and it is a function of my age or my generation you know like so we were talking to each other last night and i think one of the first things you said when we saw each other was like well the war has started um and I was just thinking about how, what a weird moment that is. Um, you know, I, when 9-11 happened, I was really young. I, it was um, the year before I started kindergarten. And it felt like the world stopped. Of course, this is from the mind of a child, right? So maybe it was um, different for adults. Um, and then I remember, like, the evasion, invasion of Iraq. It felt like the world stopped. Every morning in my Catholic school, we would pray for the soldiers. And it, it's, it's so uncanny to experience this in my adulthood now. Because that's what I was telling you last night. It was like, I feel like, you know, when growing up, you get the sense that, oh, when things like this happen, where I'm cognizantly aware that this is what is setting the tone for the remainder of this century, the magnitude of this event, how much life just goes on the same. I still go to my job, you know, still got to go pick up my groceries. I still have to go do my dumb errands and chores. I didn't get the same feeling that the world stopped what I did when I was younger. I don't know how to think about that. Um, I, don't, I wonder if other people um, feel the same way. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm sure. Well, I mean, maybe Ukrainians are feeling a little more like that. Also, it hasn't yet been as devastating as um, those attacks. So we'll see. Mm -hmm. um, uh, two other things I think we should highlight is all of the idiots who kept on saying like, oh, the war is not going to happen, the war is not going to happen, because, again, it's, it's okay if you had wrong predictions, many people have wrong predictions, but their reasoning was 
that Putin, no, so like by the Biden administration is just fear mongering, just like they did with the weapons of mass destruction when it comes to Saddam. Okay. And if you say that Putin is going to attack Ukraine, you are just a bootlicker that believes the regime and whatever they tell you. Um, it's so amazing because what they were saying, like the level of self-awareness was unbelievably low because they were basically accepting what Putin was saying, <laughs> right? So they were like doing the people who are saying that when we believe, because the Biden administration's predictions of what's happening, what's, what was about to happen was ended up being so unbelievably accurate. Like the, they even said the reasonings that Putin is going to use for every stage of this game and game and Putin was on like on script every moment. Like he's like, okay, now he's gonna say this, and he said it. Well, now next he's gonna say this, and he said it. Like even the excuses that Putin was make gonna make was predicted, and it just happened exactly like they predicted it. But we were being accused, like we were taking that warning by the uh, Biden administration seriously. We were accused of falling for a lie, just like people fell, fell for the lie of the weapons of mass destruction claim by the Bush administration, right? But they ended up being the, the those people, okay? The people who just fell, like the, their anti-Americanism has blinded them so much that they didn't realize that in this moment of history, the people who were believing Putin were the same people who were believing the Bush administration's lies about the, you know, the WMDs, not us. Okay, so it was you, <laughs> okay, not us. As that one point, okay? So second, so another thing I wanted to point out is that the claim by Putin, okay, that they're going to Ukraine to denazify Ukraine is so unbelievably rich, okay? First of all, you're talking about a country who elected a Jewish president <laughs> as a country that needs denazification, okay? Ukraine has a Jewish president, okay? So, and also, you're making the argument for an invasion of Ukraine, okay? The argument that you're making is based on blood, blood and soil argument, okay? You're talking about, oh, these people are ethnically the same. Would they belong to each other? Who does that remind you of, okay? Who does that remind you of? They belong okay. to, like, us. They belong to us because of blood ties. This is giving, this is like, you sound like Hitler, okay? So again, you might say like, oh, Ar Armin, this is like, this is Godwin's law and blah, 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 blah. They're making, they're making that argument. The people who are claiming that they're going to Ukraine to denazify it are the people who are making the exact same arguments for why this territory belongs to us when, for Hitler going into Poland, Okay. These are our people. They, oh, these people are like ethnically the same. We have a history with each other. Who gives a crap? Okay, guys, go listen. Go listen to the representative of Kenya. Okay, about this whole blood and soil and borders and ethnicity. Therefore, history and therefore these lands belong to us. Go listen to his speech. I've never seen. I might actually just do a review on that speech. Okay, I've never seen anybody explain it so much better okay you do not mess with borders i don't care how much sense of belonging you feel with the people on the other side of the border we these are the borders we have messing with it is going to be a lot more costly than whatever like cultural or nostalgic or bring back this history or like oh we share the same G genes the same mother the same dna the same language oh my mother's told the same story to us when we were Growing up, then they tell like we have the same level. Of, nobody gives a fucking fuck. Okay, these I are know, the borders like, who we cares have. About <laughs> these are the borders you have. We have a record of every time you try anybody tries to move these. Like oh, okay, another argument. These were the borders defined to us by imperialist power. Okay, now they're nope. They when they were changing it, things got like people. There was blood. There was blood in the streets. Whenever people like when they were doing it. So now that you have these borders, just keep it. Don't mess with it. Change it. Don't change it. It's good. Just deal with whatever you have right now. Don't mess with borders because the cost to human lives ends up being a lot more than whatever bullshit story that you come up with. 
and also talking about blood and ethnicity is just cringe. I mean, come on, we're in the 21st century, okay? Get over that bullshit. Nobody cares, cares about whose blood you share with what who, what people, okay? We just want to live in peace, regardless of our blood, okay? The, regardless of our DNA. Nobody should give a sh sh flying fuck about any of this, okay? Like, yeah, anyways. Well, we have Hara Sultan in live chat. Horace is agreeing with a lot of your analysis, Armin. And he's saying, I'm literally flabbergasted at watching people living in the West sucking Putin's dick. Okay, the one thing, I've been avoiding social media because one, I have absolutely no ability to verify most of what I see on there regarding this conflict. So I just like, don't take any, I don't put any credence on that. But the one thing I have enjoyed is seeing threads of tankies getting absolutely roasted <laughs> their takes on this and how wrong they were on the whole thing and how they've everything they said what's happened over the past few days is just like a complete yeah proving them completely wrong so you know, you know what? that was the only good thing you know who's the main person that did this that i want to say a major fuck you to trump did you see trump coming out and praising putin over this guys this is this is why anybody who didn't vote any american who didn't vote for biden could go get fucked okay if imagine if trump was in power like right now we're worried about whether germany is going to be aligned with united states and being aggressive and with france and everybody else and being aggressive enough against uh, putin imagine if trump was in power trump just came out recently praising putin the, the former president of the United States right now is is praising Putin. Imagine if that motherfucker was in power right now. We wouldn't have to worry about whether the world is united against Putin. We would have to worry about whether the United States itself is united against Putin. Like, somebody shut that, mother, that guy up. Like, I can't wait for this man to pass away. Seriously. Like, you have oh no... Oh, my goodness. Like, that, seriously, like, you're such a, such a toxic... God damn it. Everything he says, I'm glad that he turned into a clown. Like the, the world has realized that he was a clown. Okay. Because if any other former president, any other former president right now came in, coming out and praising Putin would have been making, made United States look a lot more divided than it is right now. We need unity against uh, Putin. Okay. So, um, Trump is such a, such a fucking major joke that nobody is taking his statement over praising Putin as a sign of disunity in the by in, in the united states right like the amount of one the major advantage of had, having the biden administration right now is that a united voice is coming out of the united states okay and that's what we need right now that's what we need right now so thank you to the biden no matter again are we gonna have a lot of criticism for biden's administration but right now right now they are leading the way. This is why we need United States, okay? As many crimes as United States have committed around the world, and we're going to blame them for all, every single one of them, and we're going to highlight them. But there is no other force right now that could do better when it comes to leading the world against uh, the destabilization the United States, okay? Any, like, pick another superpower, right? What, who, who do you want to have in charge? You want to have China in charge as a superpower? Did you want to have, like, the former Soviet Union in charge? Like, as flawed as the United States is, there is no other country. Like, look at Germany. Like, they, they did not have the backbone to take a lead on this, right? They were supposed mm -hmm. to be the lead. They were supposed to be the leading country in the European Union, and they were like, "But yeah, but yes, motherfuckers, we're like talking about this, the, all the standards that has made trade and stability possible ever since World War II, okay? Yes, energy prices are going to go up. Deal with it. This is the cost. You Germany has paid a much bigger cost in recent history when it comes to getting the world order. So I'm sure higher gas prices is not a cost that we shouldn't be willing to pay, okay? I know it's going to be difficult. Markets are going to crash. People are going to be poor. People are going to suffer. The working class is going to suffer extremely. There's going to be ex a lot of discomfort coming forward, but it's worth it. The pr this is the price that we have to pay to make sure that we Putin does not set the new norm for how international politics are done.
Okay. Um, do you want to look at some pushback you've received or yeah, get sure. into the rest let's of the patron the, questions? No, no, let's do the pushbacks. A little bit. So basically, Philip is giving you a lot of flack in the live chat saying, if it's wrong for Russia to invade Ukraine, which it is, why was it okay for the West to bring their nose into the Libyan affairs back in 2011? And also bringing up uh, invading Central America and the Middle East. Okay, you're not listening. You're not listening. We're not the we're not the kind of people that defends the United States over everything they do. Okay, so I don't know why. What made you think that we think every, we we're saying like what, Philip? Are you like the mayor of what about is them? Like how is this working? Like what does this got to do with what we're saying? Okay. Do we say that, oh, Russia should be put in its place because of what it's doing? Therefore, United States has done everything correct and there's nothing, that there's no flaw with your, the, the politics and the, like, have you, are you new here? Because we have a record of criticizing United States and uh, especially, I could provide you a bigger list than what you're doing, okay? Look at the war crimes that United States committed in Cambodia. Okay, look at the support that United States has for Saudi Arabia and re being responsible for gre the greatest humanitarian crisis right now in Yemen. The, your, exa your examples are not even significant. United States like dropped two atomic bombs in Japan. Like, do I have I have a bigger list uh, than you? Okay, I have a bigger list than you. What does this got to do with us saying that the world needs to be united against Russia, against Putin, not against Russia, against Putin right now? What does this got to do with what we're saying? Okay, like you're like oh. You're, you're you're saying that we're claiming the United States has no foreign policy has no flaws. Where do you where are you you're pulling shit out of your ass? Like, do you know do you know do you not see how what you're talking about is just like it's what about is him? What does this got to do with what we're saying? It has no relevancy to what we're saying. <laughs> I have such an childish sense of humor. Harold Sultan is, I can't wait for Armin to fuck these conspiracy theorists. I'm like, it's gonna take him to dinner. Wine him, dine him, lay him down. Just fuck him. <laughs> okay, guys. Every country will have a not very clean record when it comes to foreign policy, okay? And the more power that country has, the bigger their crimes are going to be, okay? So United States being the world superpower, given that any country, again, I'm not excusing anything the United States does, okay? But you would expect to see higher costs from the mistakes by a superpower relative to smaller countries, okay? But if I had to choose a superpower that is maintaining world order, okay? I would, with all the mistakes, with all the war crimes, with all the flaws that united states has i would pick united states any day any day as a superpower that is leading the way to creating some form of stability over countries like china or russia or anyone else okay imagine if the islamic republic of iran right now was the world superpower in charge of bringing peace to the world and you know it's leading the way in that what kind of a world would we be leading if i had to pick any country that right now again i'm telling you any country that you put as a leader because of the any country that has the, the the economy and the army to be able to be that superpower, relatively will have will cause a lot more damage whenever they make a mistake. Okay, because they're just a giant. Okay, in a in a, in a room of ants. Every time they make a misstep, they're just going to annihilate a whole bunch of ants. Right, but if that if there's going to be a country that does that it better be a country that is somewhat somewhat i know it's not a priority i know economy speaks is number one issue always okay but it has to be a country that is somewhat influenced by enlightenment values okay at least that it's part of their narrative i know it's not their priority one i know it's not their priority two i know it's not their priority three but it's somewhere on their goddamn list okay so you could say that, okay, United States claims to be a defender of human rights, uh, claims to be a defender of democracy, claims to be a defender of secularism, blah, 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 but they're actually not. These are the other priorities that they have. But the difference is the other countries don't even got, claim it. 
they are aggressively opposing it. Okay? Even if it's just for PR purposes, even if you just think this is all just a show, they have to maintain the image to some extent, even if it's just because of maintaining some soft power. Okay, even if human rights, secularism, democracy is just beneficial to these countries because it gives them soft power as a way that they could leverage it against their competitor powers. The fact that they're using it as a tool gives us an advantage to use that as a way to pressure us collectively as a way to pressure that as a, as a way for them to give into that. There's a reason why these countries have managed to create a lot more autonomy to people to a lot of a lot greater self-determination to the people to their citizens and other countries and have been able to provide a lot more stability and progress okay because they these values are on their list okay maybe too far down on their list but on the list or else they wouldn't their citizens wouldn't be living such um, such prosperous lives anyways Atheist Republic needs your help. We have been the target of many legal attacks by Hindu nationalists ever since our founder, Armin Ababi, blasphemed against Hindu deities. We have retained legal counsel to help us defend our access to our community in India. We have started a fundraiser that will help us afford to tackle many legal issues, including judicial harassment and censorship. Whatever you can contribute will go a long ways in helping us in this fight. Link in the description below.